Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 1, Tutorial 22B. This is the second of two tutorials focused on impairment of property, plant, and equipment assets. This tutorial focuses on accounting for impairment of PPE under IFRS. Tutorial 22A focuses on PPE impairment under ASPE. There are three learning objectives for this tutorial. First, we will review how to determine the recoverable amount of PPE assets for the purpose of determining whether or not impairment is present under IFRS. Second, we will review how to assess if impairment is present under IFRS. And third, review the calculation of impairment under IFRS. This tutorial continues with the Vader Corp example and focuses on requirement two, specifically requirements two A and B. In this case, we are now assuming that uh, VADA reports under IFRS versus ASPE, and we have to prepare the appropriate journal entries under each of the following scenarios. So the first is where the undiscounted future expected cash flows are 25000 per year, with the expected cost to dispose of the reactor at the end of its useful life of $45,000, and B, the expected undiscounted future cash flows are 50000 per year. And again, the expected cost to dispose of the reactor is also still $45,000. Under IFRS, the first step is to determine the recoverable amount. This is not the same thing as the recoverability test under ASPE, however. How we determine the recoverable amount is by taking the greater of the value in use, also known as the VIU, uh, which is also known as the discounted future cash flow. So value in use is simply discounted future cash flows. So we take the greater of the value in use or the fair value less cost to dispose or less the disposal cost. And so here is the difference versus ASPE. ASPE does not deduct the disposal costs, but IFRS does. So under our two scenarios here, our carrying value is the same and, and is calculated in the same way under ASPE, where we had taken the, the six years of accumulated depreciation under double declining balance. So 1761 205 is the carrying value. And next is to determine the value in use. And so we can denote that as item B. So to calculate our value in use, we're going to take our annual undiscounted cash flows and we're going to discount them to present value. So under scenario A, the undiscounted cash flows are 25,000. So uh, we will take 25,000, enter that as a payment, and we will enter 45,000. Don't forget to put a plus minus in front of that. 45,000 as a future value which represents the expected cost of disposal and that's going to be a cash outflow so the 25,000 payments are cash inflows the 45,000 disposal costs are an outflow discounted at 44 years or 44 periods at 2% as indicated in the data will give you a present value of $708,171 under scenario B we undergo the exact same process except now our cash flows under scenario B are 50,000 annually. So really, all you have to do is just override the 50,000 or the payment in your calculator, put 50,000 PMT and recompute the present value at 44 periods of 2% and you'll get $1,435,170. If you did not get these present values, you'll have to stop the video and try again. And if you still have trouble obtaining these uh, values, then you should ask uh, your instructor for some assistance. Next, we will include our fair value, less cost uh, to dispose or less disposal costs. So from the data, we're told the fair value is 795, but the cost to dispose are 45,000. So that gives us a net fair value, less disposal costs of 750,000. And that's the same under both scenarios. Now we calculate the recoverable amount, which we'll denote as uh, item D. And the recoverable amount is the greater of b or c or which is the greater of the value in use or the fair value less cost to dispose so if we compare under scenario a the value in use versus the fair value less disposal costs well the higher number is 750,000, which ends up being the fair value less disposal costs but in scenario b because our cash flow payments are higher the value in use is higher so 1,435,170 is greater than 750,000. Under scenario B, the recoverable amount is going to be 1,435,170. The next step is to determine whether or not impairment is present or evident. And how we do that 
is simply ask a, a very basic question. Is the recoverable amount, which we've denoted to be item D, less than the carrying value, which we've denoted to be item A? So if D is less than A, or if the recoverable amount is less than the carrying value, then we have impairment. If we look at scenario A, we have a recoverable amount, as we determined to be 750,000, and compared to a carrying value of 1,761,205, we see that the carrying value is higher or the recoverable amount is lower than the carrying value, therefore we have impairment. Under scenario B, we will compare the calculated recoverable amount of 1,435,170 against the carrying value of 1,761,205, and the carrying value is, under this scenario, still higher also than the recoverable amount. So impairment is evident under scenario B as well. Finally, our last step is to calculate the impairment and uh, create any journal entries. So we will calculate the impairment and denote that as item E to be simply the difference between the recoverable amount, A, and the carrying value. If we look at what the recoverable amount is, we said under scenario A, the recoverable amount is 750,000 and the carrying value is 1,761,205. That results in impairment of $1,011,205. We'll create a journal entry for that by debiting the loss on impairment and crediting accumulated impairment losses. Then for scenario B, we will make the same comparison. We will compare our recoverable amount to our carrying value. Well, we've already done the comparison. We just now need to do the math. So uh, 1,435,170 minus 1761205 is $326,035. And the journal entry for that one would be the same accounts, debit loss on impairment, credit accumulated impairment losses, but this time under scenario B, the amount would only be 326035. Let's now conclude with some points to remember. The impairment process for PPE assets under IFRS can actually be broken down into three steps. First, determine the recoverable amount as the greater the value in use or the fair value less disposal costs. We can call that recoverable amount RA. Second, we compare the recoverable amount to the carrying value. And if that recoverable amount is less than the carrying value, then we have uh, impairment. If the recoverable amount is more, then we do not have impairment. And third, if impairment is present, simply calculate the impairment amount as the recoverable amount minus the carrying value, and you're done. So this concludes tutorial 22B on impairment for property, plant, and equipment assets under uh, IFRS. If you need to review uh, impairment of PPE under ASPE, then you'll need to go back and uh, revisit tutorial 22A. We hope you found these useful.